Hello everyone, this is Phallix1, and this is going to be our fifth segment guide. This is going to be Lumine Hall. Lumine Hall is my least favorite section of the game. Uh, many runners, I think, would also agree with that. It is a terrible spot. It will end a lot of your runs, and it'll make you very sad. Hopefully, I can help alleviate some of those pains. But, I'm probably going to get sad right along with you. But I wanted to start it right here, just to stress a point. Do not forget this Dragonite. This is right after the picture and after giving the book. Be sure to talk to the chief one extra time. He gives you this bag of Dragonite. And very, very important, make sure it goes into Nesta's inventory. Sometimes I've had it go into Paula's inventory and I didn't catch it. And that ended the run in Magic Ant. But you want to move the Tendakraut to Pooh's inventory if you didn't do it already. Be sure to talk to this little guy. But you don't have to talk to the next one, because it's really not that important. But, Imnigo. If you're normally a casual player, your instinct is going to tell you, Ooh, look, experience balloons. Don't go for them. You could fight them. You could star storm them, they're not going to die. Actually, since I've been messing with some stuff, I need to check something. Do I actually have star storm? I don't. Okay, so. Ugh. I'm going to have to do something else. Right. Walk up around here. Sometimes you'll get some fobby spawns right here, but they're nothing to worry about. Walk around. This is pretty normal not to get any spawns. Uh, if you do, you can try despawning them using the, the normal method. But if you do fight them, just toss them a star storm. They'll die and you'll get some experience for it. This is the worst part. This is the horseshoe. Aptly named because it's in the shape of a horseshoe. These spawns here are just absolutely brutal, and you're going to have a run die to this at least once, trust me. So what we're going to do is we're going to save state, because I would like to go through, if I get good luck, I want to have actually bad luck to give you an example. But we had no spawns at the start, which, eh, you're lucky you didn't have to despawn. Now come on down around. Don't be all the way to the left. I'd recommend being just a little off the wall, that way if you do see something, you can move to the right and despawn it. Well, we didn't. What we did see is a Conducting Spirit, my least favorite enemy in the game. They terrify me. Now, he's right below me. The odds of me being able to get away are very low. Ooh, but I did. But, here's the problem with this. This whole area is full of spawns. I got very lucky right there because he decided to clip into this wall. Another guy spawned up here. He very well could have spawned on the right and chased me down. Despawning things here is extremely risky, but it paid off for me. Now, we didn't see any spawns. All right, we got one, and he's going to stay right there. We might be able to despawn him. Because right here, you know, there's, there's nothing down here, so nothing's going to get us. But do not walk up and to the right. That's a very easy way. Like, right above the screen there, you can have an enemy spawn. You don't want to go up any. Just kind of hang out around here. Now, alright, good deal. Okay, so this is what a good horseshoe looks like. Unfortunately, that's not what I want. That's pretty rare to have that happen. Okay, there we go. And we're not getting away. And his buddy comes. This is the worst fight in the dungeon. Thank you, game, for giving us that. The uncontrollable spear is fast, and it can also use fire. You want to use hypnosis on it with Ness. Paula, she needs to use her highest level of freeze, just in case. Jeff, if you have an extra bottle rocket to spare, I tend to MBR the Conducting Spirit. I don't mess around with them. In general, also in runs, I wouldn't use freeze. We got our flash beta. Okay, not bad. Nobody died. That flash beta can one-shot everybody but Ness. Okay, so we got a kill with just our freezes. Jeff is a little slow right now. And that happened. But it's okay, because they're dead and it's some extra experience. Which, if you're learning the game, it's alright. Ness has plenty of psychic points to heal everybody up here. Let's go ahead and do that. Also, I'm pretty low level. If you're running this for the first time, odds are you're going to be 
a lot higher level. Did Paula get her freeze gamma there? She did not. Yeah, still really. You're gonna have freeze gamma by this point. All right, we had a spawn. You don't want to go up. All right, good. Stick into the bottom. Despawn them. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good horseshoe. You know, in both cases. All right, we have a spawn there. Generally, you're not going to get a spawn right here when you're walking left and right. I've had it happen, but it tends to be pretty rare. It tends, your spawns are going to be down low. S walking right where I'm walking right here, this is a pretty safe despawn path. Because you're barely letting the right side of the screen end up. All right. When you come up here, I'm going to walk a little bit above the wall. Upright to a little bit past the box. Actually, probably a little bit about right here, yeah. And when you get up here... I'm gonna walk up, and then upright, right where I'm at. You're gonna clip onto this wall right here, and up to the stairs, and see if I can get it clear. Nope. I may not be able to do that again. That avoids some spawn zones. You can get some spawns up there at the very top. Alright, be careful here, because spawns can happen. Just a little bit up, All right here. You go up, and right here, it's pretty lenient. I just want to be sure the little section of the wall that's right above me, thats that needs to be your guide. Go up to it, up right again. Just be sure that when you're going up to this top section, you're in line with this little wall right here. And that'll get you out of there. If you're walking over here towards the right, uh, there's a good chance that you're going to get more spawns up here. Uh, the game has like some little tiles that you can't see. Uh, not really sure how it works, but just staying here along that left wall and using this post that I'm right below and that post is a good guide alright could have got away from that but it's alright let's see if they do some bad stuff alright I've already used one multi bottle rocket so I don't got another one to use looking like they should kill him nope uh oh Alright, this will kill him. The solidifies are really helpful. We did get that flash beta. Um, the flash beta can paralyze and it can kill, which are both terrible outcomes. You'd like to have all the kids alive here. The, the spirit gives a lot of experience. Now, up here. Let's, let's, let's get some bad luck. That's some good luck. There you go. This is pretty typical. My normal thing is I'll go up and down three or four times, and if I can get just maybe three or four fobbies, I'll take the fight. Yeah, at this point, better just to take anything. Because you can spend a lot of time. So yeah, I had four there. That's an easy take. I should have taken it. But I remember now, I don't, I don't have Star Storm. Because I'm using warping. But let's just take them. This probably won't kill them. Good roll, shit. They're very slow. So even if you don't have Pooh alive, or Pooh's out of psychic points, you can clear them off. Even if they didn't die, you're not a threat. They're just little balloons full of experience. But as soon as we end this fight, we're going to use a skip sandwich. I believe I have one on Paula. Pooh is paralyzed, so he can't use one. Also, Pooh just learned healing uh, Gamma. Very important skill, and it's nice to go ahead and get it here. But as soon as that fight ends, we well, still got some iframes. Use a skip sandwich. Now, here's where you need to make a decision. I was definitely going to get in a fight towards the end there. So, just went ahead and green swirl. While well, they're sitting there looking left and right, very, very easy green swirl. Now, this is another place that's up to runner's preference. To the bottom left is the most important item in the run, the rabbit's foot. You can either grab it before or after the fight. I tend to grab it after, but when you're newer to the run, I would recommend grabbing it first. It will help 
pretty much ensure that you're going to two-shot Electro Spectre. So let's grab it first. Put the iframes, get right on by. And again, for a first run, I would recommend moving it to Jeff. Be very careful here and do not drop it. I've done it. I've got highlights of it. It was a sad day. I'll go ahead and move it to Jeff. The rabbit's foot gives you plus 40 speed. When your speed is essentially your accuracy stat for your multi-bottle rocket. Now we still got a balloon up there. He might not go away, but if he doesn't, we'll just we'll deal with it. Yeah, that one's not leaving. But he is alone. Oh, his buddy's coming and he's gonna miss. Rare to smash from Jeff because he doesn't have a weapon. Freeze Gamma one shot. And it doesn't matter if you get the rabbit's foot before or after the fight. Uh, time wise, it's the same, it's just consistency. If you have the rabbit's foot before this fight, your chances of two shotting the boss are much higher. But for this fight, if you didn't give, if you don't intend on getting the rabbit's foot first, uh, if I have extra money, I tend to get a super bomb on Paula, and this is what it's used for. And this super bomb is obtained in deep darkness. Uh, we got the rabbit's foot, so I'm not going to use it. If you did get it and you did get the rabbit's foot first, I would recommend saving it. But just going to multi bottle rocket. 2372 damage. Very, very good roll. Uh oh. Paula rolling to death, but it's okay. Oops. Because they're going to go much faster and overkill him by like 1600 HP. Once again, one of the easiest parts of this run is the bosses. Once you get the multi bottle rockets. Let me sit through a long leveling sequence because he's worth a lot of experience. I guess it's really not even relevant for me to show this part. It's pretty self-explanatory where you need to go next, but... Just for a completion of sake. Let me simply go up and drop in the hole. But I do want to go back to the horseshoe. See what kind of luck we get if we go too far right. Oh, we get a spawn. But there's so many spawns here, only he decided to link to me. Okay, this is one option you can do, but got a little unlucky and he went first. I feel like my Jeff might be a little too low for when I got him. Because the goal there is to go before him. I'm wanting to get pincered. There we go. That was that was pretty quick. Because the in the process of wanting to despawn him, we got another spawn. Uh, my recommendation there is once you get into the horseshoe, just commit and hope for the best, or you'll most likely force yourself into a worse situation. Just like that one. Because now we gotta fight another conducting spirit, which is another chance to get most of the party wiped out. Because if they use a flash beta, it's unlikely, but very possible that they could one shot everybody but Ness and not ticking HP down and you can save them. It's instant death. And also, running from them is not likely to happen. The spheres are very fast. But for the sake of the last part of the video, let's see what happens. Nope, didn't happen. There you go. Fire Alpha, which is a good roll. But it's still going to do a lot of damage to everybody. And Flash Alpha. Flash Alpha is a good roll. It isn't too dangerous. It can make it feel strange, though. But that'll do it for this one. Uh, again, just look at the, the pathing that I did here in the horseshoe, and just, like in Starman base, just commit. Don't sit there and try and despawn, because you're most likely going to make life worse for yourself. You just got to stick to your fights, and hope for the best. And that'll do it for this one, and I'll move on to Fire Springs. Thank you very much for watching.